All right, everyone, thank you for hitting play, whether that's here on YouTube, now that my videos are popping up on YouTube, or it's the podcast and you're a new listener, welcome, or a veteran listener, can't wait for you to hear this conversation. Um, I have with me today, Mariah Shimatsu, and she is the founder and mastermind behind Movement First Wellness. We have an exciting conversation scheduled for today, and we have some guests here, uh, not camera on, uh, but they're watching this conversation happen and they're going to possibly be popping in the chat. So we're going to hopefully um, have that engagement either during the conversation or at the end at the Q&A. And Mariah, I'm so excited that you're here. Uh, thank you for joining me here on the show. Thanks for having me. So we've known each other for a while um, and it's interesting. You actually were episode number five way long time ago on the podcast. Uh, what the wellness is what we called it. And today we're here and we've got some new things to cover when we're thinking about wellness, when we're thinking about company culture, it is the year 2023, actually a specific date is April 25th of 2023. And so much has happened. So much has happened with the, just the the, the word wellness. So let's dive right in. You've been running your company. Let's have just a little bit of a backstory about you. And then I want to lead into, you know, what are those pain points that you hear when you're connecting with companies, when they're trying to put a wellness program together? So let's hear about you first. Um, so yeah, I'm Mariah Shibatsu. I started Movement First Wellness. Um, it came together around 2015, but I've been in corporate wellness since 2009. Uh, I was pregnant with my first kid and really didn't know how I wanted to continue in the fitness and wellness industry. And so I just decided to take what I'd been doing for years and kind of make it my own so it could fit better with growing a family. Um, and then here we are three kids in going, <laughs> you know, went through a pandemic, big changes for the company came, um, but we're still going strong. And I love what I do. I'm passionate about helping companies orient wellness and all sorts of forms. That's how the backstory. <laughs> yeah. And you had a gym at one point. Is that right? I did. I had a gym from 2012 until about 2016 after starting the wellness company and having my first, I shut that down. It really was not my passion. Um, you set yeah. boundaries, right? You knew what your capacity was. Awesome. We tried it, but it, yeah, it was not the thing. So then you had the, the corporate wellness program alongside the gym or that was a birth after closing the gym? No, they were always alongside. So okay. yeah. So when you're such a, I mean, you start at 5am and you go until 7pm. <laughs> so yeah. And the corporate wellness fits nice in the middle when a lot of people are at work and not coming into the gym. So yeah, they were coincide. Good point. So when talking to corporations about a wellness program, what are the top three pain points you hear? Um, these days, the top three pain points I hear, first one is mental wellness, mental health. Um, and that can be so many things, you know, stress, burnout, financial burden, illness. Um, and so that's probably the number one, especially since the pandemic, people have really become aware of the extra that mental health means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, number two is how do you engage your employees and how do you keep them actively engaging, especially now in this new workforce where we're hybrid, we're remote, we're a little, you know, both. And so just trying to bring still some culture and engagement to that kind of workforce. And then number three, it's kind of back to, you know, some of the original wellness problems that we have of how do we eat healthy at the office or how do we make work-life balance? And so those are probably the top ones that we still work with. So for my regular listeners, I have altered, uh, and I don't think I've shared this with you yet, um, from work-life balance to work-life harmony. Mm -hmm. And the um, visual I try to kind of describe is, you know, you we all run out of recess to that teeter-totter. You and me, you know, we look kind of the same size and height, and we both run to the teeter-totter, and we both jump on each end, and we try to sit on it with just our toes barely touching the ground. And it was the challenge, right? At least that's what I was doing at recess when I was younger. And could you actually achieve it that both of you were equally creating that line? And I was like, it's really hard to achieve that. So why not a figure eight, right? The harmony, right? The intersection of, oh, it's a sweet spot. Everything's going great. Then there's the ups and then there's the downs. So I really like the work-life harmony piece, um, especially when we think about family. Um, you know, burnout is getting a ton of rotation in headlines and yeah. 
I, if we looked back, probably if we had the internet in the eighties and the nineties, and there were headlines, then, you know, we could probably see that there. So it's, it's sadly, you know, not something that we can fully get rid of. Uh, so that's really interesting. The eating thing is key too. And you, you mentioned it and I'm hearing this, especially from my admins I'm talking to that sense of belonging, right? If you're hybrid, I've got some candidates, yeah. some candidates are like, I'd love to be back in the office. I miss yeah. people. Um, so maybe Helani, you know, there's a hybrid where it's one day at home, every Friday, four days in the office where there is engagement, you know, of those three pain points, where do you start and what's most important when you want to provide them, you know, a direction? Yeah, I, I do believe the most important area to start is with that mental health. Um, it really speaks to the individuals themselves and as a whole. And I think taking a holistic approach through it is the biggest thing and understanding it's very, you know, multifaceted that when you're looking at mental health, we're looking at mental, physical, financial, there's all these stress and burdens that come into that play of why you might be not feeling, you know, your best. Mm -hmm. um, and as a, from a company standpoint, I think the easiest way to implement mental health right off the bat is just coming back to like a recognition led program mm -hmm. where, you know, if you can recognize your employees and see them for people a little bit more, tell them good job, you know, praise them, give them some rewards. It just lets them know that their valuable time that they spend every day at the office is well worth it. Mm -hmm. And so that burnout factor, it might not, you know, get rid of it, but it might make it a little bit less intense. They might feel just that appreciation. Um, so I always tell employees, you know, don't forget those little thank you notes or those little great job and bring it up in, you know, the town hall meetings and call people out. Like it's such a forgotten thing. I think just that little, little extra step that make us again, feel like people and feel important. And that's so, so needed. Mm -hmm. How, how to engage them. That's through, as you were mentioning, you know, the town hall, the thank you notes. Mm -hmm. I love thank you notes. <laughs> um, I buy personal station, uh, um, uh, personal stationery, and I can be found sending a note maybe every other week to someone and putting a stamp on it, right. Writing the address on the label right. and just sending that out. And, um, you know, I think also if I were to drop one more thing, the way that we close emails could be just a simple, small, we're sending about 40 to 50 emails a day. If you closed it with, I appreciate you mm -hmm. or even in partnership or, you know, change it up. You're the best. And this yeah. was able to, you know, get done because of you. Um, you know, that's going to be like, wait a minute, that's different. You know, I, yeah. I, no one's talked to me like that before in an email that feels really good. Um, and that sense yeah. of belonging is a, is a big thing as well. That's the thing. The, I think the appreciation, you know, it doesn't only cover some mental stress, burnout, sense of belonging, but then you start to create this culture around it, right? And you start to really get that vibe going at the office that everybody's included and it's more of a team effort. And it helps bring, especially in the hybrid world, a little bit of sense of that community back. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it's just a, such an easy way that we can get back to it and show people that we really care. Yeah. And I think you didn't say it, but I'll, I think it complements what you just said, bring the human back into the office. Yeah. 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 We're working so hard, you know, pushing, grinding it out to the point of that burnout part, you know, let's, you know, with sprinkles right on a really luscious cupcake, right? <laughs> let's just I add a little bit more. Are you sharing those two um, articles that we kind of referenced Talani in the end of this? I will. Yeah, I will. Yeah. One is one from Forbes very and one centric. is Gartner. Yeah. Yeah. It speaks to human centric workforce and how we mm. implement wellness around the human. Um, so that'll be, yeah, a great little touch point. Yep. Those will be in the show notes of both the YouTube video and the podcast. So you guys can hit that. And then read and take that in. Awesome. Yeah, the human side. And I think the recognition is key. Um, I think also uh, the culture piece, you know, if you started small with something, um, I have a individual that I know and they do monthly lunch and learns. They just hosted a, a individual for their women employees and she ran for an hour. She talked about uh, your uh, mentorship capabilities and what you should be doing. And I thought, what a great way to kind of bring them together because then clearly after that collective experience, they've got something extra to talk about, which kind of helps them create deeper connections with their peers. So that's an idea that's coming to mind for anyone that hears this. It's like, well, where do we start? A lunch and learn could be super easy to implement. Yeah. yeah. We do a lot of lunch and learns through our company for 
corporations or organizations, whoever we're working with. And of course, we always usually are talking more on the wellness topic, but yeah, it's a great way to bring people together right now. Yeah. Really great. Could you do that virtually? Yeah. We've done some virtual. Nice. We have a company that we work with in Maryland that we do um, obviously everything virtual and we do sure. some learn learns and yeah, some yoga. I class. should drop that here. She's here in Denver, Colorado, <laughs> which is where I am, even though we're not in the same room and uh, yeah, being able to capitalize on the virtual experience and just still make a difference is really an awesome gift. Yeah. It's so been you, the blessing of COVID, right? <laughs> I, you know, I would say there were curses and then there were gifts. That was definitely a gift. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so you've been doing this a long time, as you kind of mentioned in the opener, you've got to have some great before and after stories, right? Um, yeah. Can you share one of them with us? Of course. So yeah, I've been doing this for about 14 years. Um, I, one of my favorite, most recent stories is we did a spring fleeing wellness challenge last mm. spring. So we were, um, this company specifically came back to the office in June of 2021. I've been with them, however, since 2016. So, you know, we've seen our ups and downs through all of it. We went through COVID together. Um, and they really wanted to boost the wellness program. We had seen a big taper off with coming back to the office after COVID. Um, and so we ran a spring clean challenge that was oriented around accumulating minutes. And the way we programmed it was you, you and a partner. So we wanted to bring some team building to it. We wanted to increase the wellness program. We wanted to improve engagement. We do on-site fitness classes. So another goal of ours was increase the fitness class participation. So we took all of our goals, created the challenge. You joined with a partner. Um, if you attended classes, you got double the points, which was a little not fair weight wise when we look at the end result. Um, but again, it, it, result, it got us our goal. Mm -hmm. um, and so based off that challenge, we ran it for 30 days. We just saw huge numbers come out of it. So we had the company's roughly about 120 employees. And again, keep in mind, they're only required to be in the office two or three days a week. You know, we're in a hybrid <laughs> hybrid lifestyle. And we saw 44 participants get involved with the challenge alone. We had some side things going. So we had created a walking challenge that you could accumulate minutes, but it wasn't necessary to attend. And with the walking group, we saw an additional 11 people. So out of the whole company, we had 53% of the company participating in our spring events. So that was amazing. So on average, 30% engagement for um, corporate wellness is about where we fall. If you incentivize the um, programs, you'll see closer to that 50 to 70%. And coming back from COVID, we were averaging about 18. So we were really low. So to see 53% get involved for that month was awesome. Um, and then we also saw that, or we ran a chair, a chair massage event, like an appreciation day during Ooh. that where we could have 40, I believe, 48 different time slots. The employees rave, they still to this day talk about that event and how wonderful it was to have them come and just get a 15 minute massage at the office. Um, I'm hoping we'll bring it back again this year. We hosted a wellness lunch and learn during it and we had 15 participants show up to the lunch and learn. And so it's just very multifaceted. So that way people could get involved at their own levels. We hit different areas of wellness and overall we just saw the class participation almost double. Um, and it was just a huge success. And mm -hmm. so since then, we have actually been able to maintain about half of the participation that we grew during that month. So again, right. that's great. It went away. Yeah. We did incentivize that challenge with an awesome Theragun. So there was a huge prize involved, which you can see people get excited about. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when it comes to that reward piece, it's not even the actual winning of the prize, but the chance that you have to win a prize that gets people excited and brings out their competitiveness. Um, so yeah, it was just a really successful event. I love it because it was a post COVID event. So it's very recent. Um, and we just, yeah, we got to bring in so many different cool things. Those are really great numbers. And if you yeah. looked kind of at the big picture of that, there's a hunger right? There's uh, an interest. I also think as I was listening to sort of each of the um, variables, there isn't like one only way to define for the individual that I'm being successful. There were options, which options can make people paralyzed on what decisions to make. But if they realize like, Hey, I just kind of want to softly step into this. Maybe they just come to that lunch and learn where you mentioned there were 15 people and that was enough for them. But now we've got the seeds planted in their thoughts on that wellness piece. And yeah. so 
as a whole, right, everyone felt uh, and decided what they believed was a right fit for them. And so I think the diversity of your offering is really attractive because it isn't just a box, one size fits all. And, and maybe there are some rinse and repeat components to how you kind of cater and bring uh, the program in. You're like, hey, these are our signature pieces. These are some new things that we believe that the, you know, quote, community is asking for. There's people here. I think that's really awesome. And I think the incentivize, it's not always cash though too, right? No, I mean, it's great to bring in prizes. And we, what we do when we structure it, we always want to make it an even playing field. So yeah, obviously we have people that we know are going to go crazy with the minutes, but it's always, you get a raffle ticket so if you participated in the lunch and learning that was it it doesn't matter you still got a raffle ticket into the drawing so it it's still on a weighted basis so that everyone does know that even if they only show up once we're proud of them we yeah. you know we respect that um we had what was it out of the walking group there was oh, a handful of new employees. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but people who had never participated before in a wellness mm -hmm. event. So again, we were like, this is so exciting to see new faces. Yeah. Um, and if you did participate in, I think it was three or four out of the six weeks of walking, you got a raffle ticket. And so of course there's people that got multiple raffle tickets and did get a better chance at winning. But at the end of the day, it was an even playing field and we appreciate everybody getting involved where they feel safe and comfortable. Yeah. And um I just had a thought associated with that. The, the amount of connection that can happen with those different events, mm -hmm. I think it would be wrong to ignore that that might've been a component for wanting to participate, especially for newbies to your very uh, big point made earlier, sort of connectedness, belonging. Yeah. Um, I belong to something bigger than my job. These are the people I interact with that that's giving me kind of some goosebumps because it's just, <laughs> it, it's something that yes, in the last three years, which is a great segue uh, to the next question, you know, what are employee wellness programs, most significant hurdles since the pandemic? It, I mean, I hate to beat the dead horse, but it really is that mental health. Like right now we're looking at statistics globally and nationally showing us data that burnout, isolation, depression, stress is just continuing to rise. Yeah. And I think it's, multi, you know, there's so many reasons why it's not just job related. Like I can think of one specifically and personally it's inflation, right? Everything's just so expensive these days and it's hard to kind of justify everything that's going in and going out. Um, totally. It really is. And we've seen a huge tick up in, unfortunately, you know, depression and addiction since the pandemic. And I mm -hmm. think it's just that goes back to the isolation factor when we're at home and we're not getting out. Like I know when my husband works at home, I come down and I'm like, dude, it's a great day. Go outside five minutes. Like get, out get of the outside. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think we kind of just become in that little isolated factor. You know, you go back to that healthy eating factor, which can make a big difference when it comes to depression of we're at home and maybe we're not making the healthy choices. You know, it's easy to grab a bag of chips and sit at your desk and work away or something. It and is so it's just trying to be aware of it's, it's so many areas that come back to that mental health, going outside and getting vitamin D and fresh air for 10 minutes could really boost, you know, your overall mood. Oh, so. in addition to that, what's one tip, just one tip that you would give for someone to start course correcting their mental health journey? You know, I, I see a big shift and I know some people kind of get weird when we mention these things with meditation or breathing. There's just such a powerful thing that happens within us when we focus on some deep breathing specifically or different breathing patterns. And there's so many tools and apps these days that you can jump on and use. I know the Calm app's a great one. And it, all it really takes is one to five minutes max. You know, like yeah. you can do deep breathing, you know, a five count inhale in, hold it for one, a five count exhale out for a solid minute. And you literally just feel this shift in your energy and your well-being and your everything. Um, like I do it, you know, when I get frustrated with the kiddos, I teach the kiddos to do it when they get frustrated with me. Or yeah. just, like, <laughs> it's just a powerful tool. Like my um, seven-year-old son this year battled anxiety. All of a sudden, no reason, you know, I'd say, get your shoes on for school and just started crying. <sighs> and somebody who loves school, loves his friends. And I don't know, I still to this day, you know, what triggered it, but we had to get through it with 
one, we have to do hard things. That is life. Mm. But two, knowing he's not alone. There's other kids that go through it and doing these breathing techniques when they come up or finding other things in class that he could use as an exercise. So in the moment he could calm himself down, Yes, you know, and one of the biggest things that we talked about with him was, um, you're seven, it's going to happen again and again and again. Let's get and, you some tools. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Being empowered at your age to have tools to handle this the rest of your life. Yeah. It's okay. Like it, we, we all do it. Um, and I really like tried, especially with him. And I think that's the thing is as adults knowing we're not the only ones going through it, your coworkers going, you know, mm-hmm. and so finding that kind of um, comfort and that we all are in the same place still helps. And so I would point out times to him, you know, like, Oh, mommy joined a new workout class. And guess what? I was really nervous going to the gym this morning. Yeah. And why? It's all about communication. Yeah. yeah with exactly. my two kids. Knowing that we're really in it. And so yeah. it was, yeah, it was really hard to have that one be real personal this year with him, but um, we're getting through it. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> we're actually going to pause because I want everyone who's with us today to take a deep breath. One, two, three, four, five, hold it for one because you just gave us the tip. We're all going to do this together, okay? So I'm going to count three, two, one, and then we'll begin. Three, two, one. Deep breath in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold it and slowly let it out your mouth, right? They say out of your mouth is better than out of your nose, right? Yeah, um, you inhale through the nose and you exhale through the mouth and it actually tells your parasympathetic nervous system to calm down. Calm down. (laughs) I don't know all the science behind that, to be honest with you, but it even works like if you're doing cardio and you hit like a hard burst and your heart rate's skyrocketing and you need to keep going, inhale through the mouth and exhale, inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth will help naturally lower the heart rate and that parasympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight response. Yeah. Yeah. Our our nervous system that tells us either run from the bear or stay and get eaten. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Which we don't want the latter. Um, Everyone write a little post-it note for yourself today, put it on your monitor and remind yourself to just breathe. That took us what? Eight seconds. You have eight seconds to spare to do that, to self-regulate, which is awesome. Okay. So what's the number one thing corporate corporate, just one, that strong thing that is like, you love it. What's that one signature thing. That's a wellness program that a company should have now, right now. Yes. Can I pause you for one second? Sorry. I sure. saw a chat jump, jump up. Oh, sure. To- Cheryl's got it. Yeah. That's right. Is the time count of inhale for five relevant? Can you inhale to a shorter or longer count? Great question. What would you say? So they really say anything between three to 10 seconds works. I think what you'll realize is the longer you do it and the more seasons you become at the practice, the easier it is to take those longer inhales and pause and those longer exhales. And so starting with three seconds would be perfect. And then building up to just kind of what feels natural. And for me, I like to kind of get the body. So when you inhale, kind of squeeze everything in. And as you exhale, let it all go. And it just kind of helps again with that whole, we're letting it go, releasing process. Nervous system. Great question. Thanks Cheryl for dropping that in. Uh, Okay. So what's the number one thing, a corporate wellness program that a company should have now? What's that one? Have it now. Do it yeah. now. Yeah. So I really believe that in this one, it comes to technology. I mean, I think now oh. that we are a hybrid workforce and we know it's not going away. This is the new way of the world. You have to have some kind of a technology piece. And so I usually say a mobile first platform, meaning that I mean, can you think of an adult these days that doesn't use their phone, that doesn't have a smartphone? So it needs to be a technology piece that has a mobile app to it, because that is where 90% of us are probably going to access the resource from. I mean, that you desktop is great, and I know we're there a lot for work, but just having that mobile piece, because then it can become part of the life and part of the lifestyle. And when we look at corporate wellness or wellness in general, we do really want to implement things that are behavioral, based off behavioral change, based off implementing them into our life, because that's how we're going to eventually get long-term results. I know challenges and programs can be great and can be motivating factors, but really we want those challenges and programs to give you some tool that becomes a life change. And so something that comes out of it that you can continue with. And so when we look at these mobile first applications, you want it to be that. Again, it's just an extension of our arm. It's our phone, which is what our phones become. And you can access that access that wellness component 
any time, any day, because we can't get it all in during the workday. So maybe it's at 5 a.m. you're getting it in. Maybe it's at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. or it's the calm app before bed, right? It's that 9 p.m. I'm de-stressing to sleep better tonight. So there's just so many areas that we can bring it. And if you have that technology piece, I think it just makes it accessible. And the technology piece that you're re referencing is that it's a wellness component, a wellness and, app. Yeah, wellness component. And so I, I know there's so many different tools out there. Um, there's some great corporate wellness platforms specifically. We have one for ourselves. Um, but I, I think it depends on what your goals are for your company and which one you want to bring in. So ours specifically, we it's a whole whole program and it can be not can be it is mental physical and food so we and that's within your app and this is the this yeah. is a this is a, a part of your suite of services yeah, yeah. part of our services <laughs> i know a lot of companies have brought on i keep referencing it but just the call map like my yeah. husband's company they give them a subscription and it's not only for him but for him and three family members to have access for annual membership to the call map. And th that goes back to the mental health. So I think that's wonderful. And then, you know, honestly, it's probably having maybe one or two, like if you don't have a platform like ours, that's very diverse and can bring everything together into one place, maybe it is having, you know, the calm app as well as a fitness tracker, this or that. I like having it in one place. It just simplifies it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's just so many things that it has to be technology based. And it's a great way to bring again, everyone together to create a community, to create a social environment around wellness where we can support each other and feel that we're all in it. How great is that? We're all together in meetings, having conversations, <laughs> talking about the project. We're just going to move that into the category of wellness. I love it. I exactly. love it. Uh, which this is an interesting tee up to the next question because quote, you just mentioned in expenditure, but does a corporate wellness program save companies money? Yes. I mean, so the short answer is yes. It's, um, I'm not going to lie, you know, sugarcoat it. The numbers are hard to prove. And again, it kind of goes back to the way we've implemented it for years. We've implemented it not having a technology base where we can pull data and pull the numbers and have that hard number. Um, but there's a lot of studies out there and the two articles that you guys will reference have some good numbers in there. Um, but yeah, they're saying that on average, you save six to one. So every dollar you spend for wellness, you should get a six, six dollar of return on investment. And that's over, you know, reduced medical cost, um, reduced absenteeism, reduced turnover, improved productivity, improved mm happier, healthier employees. And so you see it, and it's not just for the employer actually to see the return on investment. Individuals actually should see a return on investment for themselves as well. If they're coming off medications, if they're you know getting to be healthier and dropping those chronic diseases, their insurance premiums will go down too. So it's a win-win. Um, and it's great when the employers support the wellness program so that the employees can get that benefit on the back end. Yeah. But with all that being said, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's well yeah. it's a journey. It's a lifestyle. It does take years after you implement the program. And I wouldn't say years. You should start to see it after about a two year turn, but you'll start to see those numbers accumulate. And there'll be like kind of an evolution, right? You'll get fast data from a certain group of people in the organization. You'll get, uh, you know, the next tranche of data. And so it won't be exactly two years out, then data will start to show up. And then I think kind of connected to the word belonging we used earlier, you'll start to see some of your employees. So it's, it's healthy pressure is what I like to think. It is healthy, pure pressure because, you know, why, why else not have pressure, but to have, you know, your nutrition getting lined up your sleep, you know, you're walking, you know, actually taking a lunch to say to a person who's doing the challenge also, let's go for a walk around the building. Yeah. And then yeah. there's that belonging, right. And then to your point about turnover, I fully believe it, right. If, if you think the company's investing in your well being, which is one of the top five things right now that employees are seeking, if there isn't a wellness or a well-being component, whether it's a culture component and it's not, you know, ping pong and beer and what wine is in the fridge, which was some of the conversations in 2018 and 19 for those happy hours and gatherings. Yeah. We've now taken a positive, which was a gift from the last three years of just really investing. And you said it earlier, the whole person, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. said it too, um, journey. Journey is a big deal. Yeah, it is. And it, yeah, it really does bring us all back to 
how do we structure the program? How do we collect the data so we can see those trends? So and tell like us that, said, the benefit of doing it as we wrap this up. Yeah. The benefit of doing, having a the wellness. wellness yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the, I mean, I kind of start with the way you want to structure a little bit. You, in order to see all the benefits pop, you really need to structure it the right way. You've got to sit down and first understand why is the company bringing this, you know? And so the company has to decide what is important to us? Why do we want wellness for us? It needs to fit with the DNA and the culture of the company. And then you grow upon that. You create your goals from that. And if you structure it the right, right way so you can bring in some stats or have a technology piece that's pulling those stats for you, you're going to start to see the trends like we were talking about. Who's getting involved? Who's getting involved because so-and-so, their best friend at work got involved. And so now they're getting pulled in the right direction. Who's joining what activity? What activity is the highest ranking? And so you'll start to see, okay, when we run a walking group, we're seeing a huge participation. So why not run it three, four times a year? You know, we're starting to see when we bring in a lunch and learn talking specifically to burnout or compassion fatigue or nutrition, Oh, those are the topics people are interested in. So we're going to bring in more components around those topics. And so you start to understand how to curate the content for what the employees are seeking and asking for. Mm -hmm. And you're dead on. Millennials specifically will not almost take a job if there's not a component of this. Mm -hmm. They've been raised in a day and age that they 100% believe that they should be first almost. They take care of themselves first, which isn't a wrong thing. I know it sounds a little selfish, um, but if you don't take care of yourself, how do you give back? How do you make the company Seriously, better? yeah. And so they will leave a job quicker than anyone if they don't have that component and they're not feeling that they're valued as an individual. Yeah. Um, and I think those are the ones that we can really incentivize to be the biggest team player if we just give them that little pat on the back. And, you know, I know people sure. hate that, love it. It is what it is. And you just, each person, right, you show up for your audience based on, and you even said DNA earlier, the DNA of each of us, right? My thumbprint is like no other, right? And so having, and that doesn't mean you have to have with a thousand employees, a thousand different options, but you just kind of yeah. know your audience. Um, and in, a wellness program is not an employee benefit or is it? It is an employee benefit. It should become part of your employees benefits package these days. And so it's one and more thing, you know, you, yes, you have health insurance, you have dental insurance, vision insurance, your, you know, 401k packages, and you have your wellness component. And it, yeah, it, I know it probably sounds like it's complicated, but it doesn't have to be. No, and it doesn't could, sound complicated. At least yeah. to me, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> you could give out informational tidbits every month along wellness. And that could be, you know, the step that you take. And it doesn't have to be any kind of fancier thing than that. Yeah. Awesome. Mariah, this is so great. Where can everyone uh, connect with you, learn more about your passion and your purpose uh, so that I can, one, definitely we'll have the information in the show notes. I know where to find you, but let's <laughs> let our uh, listeners and viewers know where to find you. Give us those details. Yeah. So my website's just movementfirstwellness.com. So you can head over there. There's some great resources and downloads on where to get started with wellness on the website. Um, there's a contact form that you can fill out and reach out to me and we can do free, a free 30 minute call to help you guys get started. Um, email is simple, you know, Mariah at movement first wellness. So yeah, there's lots of ways, social media. And you're on LinkedIn, right? On LinkedIn. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Mariah, this was so fantastic. Thank you for sharing your passions with all of us. Thanks for having me. I always love these conversations.